Hi everyone, I'm about to take you through uh, the parts of a face mask, all the different Japanese parts. However, very quickly, we've been doing the monthly videos and we've been doing it all year. And now this month is the video, is the topic we've done the most amount of videos for. So we've had the Shogunate doing his videos. We've had um, Sengoku Studies doing his videos. We've had uh, Stephen Nojiri doing his videos. And of course, I've been doing my videos. And we have a colossal seven or eight videos on this topic alone with some awesome, awesome information. So uh, Stephen has taken us through some of the basics of the face mask. Uh, we've had Sengoku Studies taking us through No, Ma no Mask, the theatre mask. And we've had um, Nick from the Shogunate taking us through the different styles of face masks as well. And it's really been an educational month this month for you in the samurai community. So I hope you've appreciated it. Make sure, make sure you click the link below. Go scroll down to the bottom of the playlist and look at that section there. And there's some awesome videos. Now, just before I get into this today's video, next month is body armor. So we're gonna go through samurai body armor. And don't forget guys, by the end of this year, you are all gonna be experts on samurai armor by the time you've had all of us involved with uh, doing, bringing all the different bits of knowledge here. So here we go, let's have a look at the different parts of the face mask. Now we're gonna be working from Book of Samurai and this is page 324 and the numbers here um, correlate back to the numbers that are listed next to it on pages 325 but I'm gonna take you through them now so don't worry about it. So here we go. Right, look at number one on the right there. It's like a little hook. This is where your actual cord from your helmet goes under and really firmly fixes the mask in place. This is called Odayori no Kane or Odayori no Kane and it's like a lead for the cord. This is also called Odome no Kugi, it's like a cord bracket if you like. But you can see there, the cords from the helmet will come down and under that and tuck under the chin and they'll really, really bring the mask tight to your face. Now here, uh, number two is actually, it's not actually quite there on the picture. I don't know why it wasn't put there in the original um, 17th century manuscript. But basically here, you can also find small little protrusions that um, are not the saliva vents, but little protrusions that lead the cord as well. They're called the same as number one, and they lead the cord down so the cord doesn't come up over the cheeks and onto the mouth. So the same thing you might have here, which are leads for the cord to keep it all secure and snug on your face. Now you'll notice that this face mask has a permanent neck protector attached to it here. So you can see there is a permanent neck protector and this sometimes happens with face masks. Don't forget, if you go back to the Shogunate's video, he shows you there's so many different types of face masks. Same with Stevens from um, his channel and also Scott from Sengoku Studies. Don't forget to look at their videos and they'll take you through it. But this bottom bit is called Mune Suri no Ita. Mune Suri no Ita, which is the plate at the bottom of the throat protector. Now, the throat protector itself is called Yodare Kake. Yodare Kake. It's also called Shita Gake. Shita Gake. Okay? These are sometimes, like I say, attached directly to the face mask. Sometimes they are separate, but in this case, they are considered the same or one single piece of armor. What you might not know is that when samurai are talking about armor, they often love to count the amount of layers in it. And if you can see here, just under the beard, there's one layer, two layer, three layers, then you get to the cross layer, and then you get to the bottom um, black layer. And this is the five layered section. And they often count if there's three or five layers, depending on the type of armor. And in this case, it's called Go Sa Gari, the five layered method. So um, just be aware of that. When you're looking at samurai armor, always count the layers. It tends to have a meaning, or at least they like to talk about it. Number five is actually just pointing to the cord that's on the back of the um, mask. And this uh, is a cord that just basically you connect with. It's called the connecting cord, Kokake, the Kokake connecting cord. So uh, this will obviously just tie the mask onto your face or, you know, connecting with your arm. Now, um, <clears throat> if you see my last video in the playlist, it was about the saliva gland, or sorry, the saliva vent. 
Now, if you look at number six here, um, it's just basically pointing underneath the uh, mustache and uh, beard here. And what this means here is there's a small hole. Sometimes it has like a, a vent, which somebody in my comments said it was like the saliva vent on a wind instrument. And sometimes it's just a hole. But basically you've got water, you've got saliva, you've got sweat, everything. Um, coming together at this point in the chin. So at the very bottom of the chin, there's a hole for the saliva to come out of. The name for this is Tsuyu Otoshi no Ana. Ana just basically means hole for it. But there's an, uh, another one, another word for it, which is Asen Agashi no Ana. Asen Agashi no Ana, which is basically the sweat vent. So it's both sweat and saliva can come out of this. So there you go guys, this version is actually from uh, Book of Samurai 2 and I'll come back to you here. Just an addition guys, I tried to put the kanji on the screen but it wouldn't let me because these are photos and not videos, annoyingly. Right guys, that's this month done on Samurai Face Mask. So we've had, as I say, some great videos. So please, please, please do click the link below and go to the playlist. Just skip to the end of the playlist and it's all there for you. And I'm really thankful for those people who've been getting involved and they really have been doing some great jobs. The videos coming out are amazing actually, it's really good. I'm learning loads, which is good. I'm learning loads, which is nice. I'm getting other um, views from different set, different schools and different histories and things like that. So that's excellent. Right, I've got some that I want to add to um, Nick from the Shogunate's channel, and he's talking about the full face mask. Remember, face masks can be half, they can come around the side, or they can be full, and there's or just the jaws. There's different face masks uh, for the samurai, and at different times, different things came in. Now, um, we're talking about the full, or sorry, talking about the full face mask for Nick, and he's saying he doubts it was used in battle, and uh, this leads me on to say. Um, and if there's no evidence for this, I'm just jumping off Nick's theory, there's no evidence for this at the moment. And the idea is, that, yes, it would be so difficult to face to fight in full face mask. So it makes me wonder if those face masks would have been used by higher ranking people. Because in combat, higher ranking samurai are not really meant to fight. The, the point of being a leader in samurai armies is to lead. Now we do get examples of people leading from the front and going in, but actually, most of samurai armies, you're meant to, the, the, the commander is meant to be at the back. And not only that, his helmet is either on or sometimes it's on a stand pole so people can see his big brash helmet. And it makes me wonder if they had these face masks either on, standing there, so that the lord in the background was intimidating. And or even his helmet with everything attached was then raised on a standard so people could see it like, you know, it's intimidating horned helmet. It's like that's how a lord and he stood at the back of the battlefield on his horse watching. Or if the view is enough for him to look out on the battlefield. Now I'm not talking about the great samurai armies, the Sengoku period of the single period, not the Seki Gaharas or anything like that. I'm talking about those hundreds, if not thousands, of skirmishes we don't know anything about where instead of tens of thousands of warriors, it was just hundreds or just thousands of warriors. And the idea is that the leaders of these divisions had their face masks on, stood on their horses looking about. It's a wild theory, it's wild speculation. Don't take it as fact or anything like that. It just made me realize that there is an option that they're ceremonial masks, but there's also an option that people who don't fight in battle may wear them because it gives the correct you know, feeling and enhancement to their troops. But this is just something I was thinking about when I saw Nick's video. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Next month, in about three days, is gonna be Samurai Body Armor. Now, I know Scott and I think Nick are on for this month. They, I, Nobody has to do every single month. Some people might miss a month or so. So let's hope we get Stephen back. Let's hope we get Nick back. Let's hope we get Scott back. And let's hope you're all on their channels. And anyone else wanna have a go, we've had um, only two other people put in and they did one video each. So come on, guys. I don't care who you are, don't care how big your channel is, it doesn't matter. We're all in it together. Let's get on and let's uh, do some samurai history. And don't forget, guys, pass these videos around. Place them everywhere. Uh -huh.